Hello guys and welcome on the Windy Eichberg. I just did some comparison shots with all those cams here. The Swift 2, the Swift 1. Down here I have the Runcam Eagle and the Owl. And here is the new Foxia 1190. All of which are quite good cams. The thing I just found out about the OSD settings of the newer cams and it's uh, the same for the Fox here and the Runcam. By holding the up arrow for two seconds, you can control the additional OSD, which displays you the voltage. And voltage is either the 5 volts you're supplying the cam, or the voltage uh, you get with an extra cable from your main flight battery plus. So that's really a nice option. You don't need an OSD for your mini quad if you just want to see your voltage and timer. So these new cams uh, can do this. The Foxia 1190 and the Runcam Swift 2. I think the performance as I just tested it, uh, these new cams are great. I mean, those are really challenging light conditions today. It's overcast and sometimes the sun blazes through. dynamic range setting in the cam you'll just see it almost as good or maybe even better than with your own eyes so really impressed with the quality you shouldn't uh, go cheap with the FPV cam I mean most of the cams are around $40 and you should invest this because it really helps you get this extra immersion with flying mini quads and yeah it's also very important to see all sort of small branches for the lens, uh, I think the current standard lens is 2.5 mm and it's a good trend that they write the, fourth, the field of view on the lenses now so you don't have to guess. So that's really nice. My test trick, checking the latency in the lab. Since the normal test where you film your phone screen and then the live out isn't accurate enough. It has around 70 milliseconds of, of inaccuracy between the refresh rate of the timer and so forth. So I decided to either find a really accurate timer and a display with high enough refresh rate, which is not, hard, uh, not easy to find. But then I found, and uh, thanks goes out to Demon on RC Groups, I found this really easy trick here just have an LED on the switch and measure the time difference between LED here and here. And this should give us uh, and filmed with the Yi 4K which I'm holding right now in 240 frames mode. This should give us around 4 milliseconds I think of uh, time resolution. So let's see how this increases the accuracy of my latency tests. It has a very large connector with seven cables, but the standard three or four cables plug also fit in there. And I just needed volt ground and video, no audio. The other connector, but one thing that I wanted to point out, it has this little cable down here which can be plugged into the controller board. So if you want to set up you can plug in this board on the field and change the settings of the cam, which is normally not so easy uh, to access the settings of a camera. So that's a nice idea. Yeah, the other things are pretty... I mean, they have a second case with just one screw instead of the two. No other differences that I noted. And they have this hang mount plastic thingy. 
here and this is a cable I stripped out which would be for audio and I also left out this cable which is for voltage checking something I don't know I didn't find something in the manual yeah there's also a manual so that's the short HS 1190 overview let's see how it works quick and easy mount I used some double-sided tape and some zip ties Thank you. 